Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be making something called calcium hydroxide, which can be fairly easily made from calcium carbonate, hydrochloric acid, and sodium hydroxide, which I have not yet brought out, because first we must make calcium chloride. Now, calcium chloride can be prepared by reacting some sort of calcium carbonate source, such as these seashells or eggshells or chalk or something similar to that, with um, hydrochloric acid. Now, this is uh, approximately 32%, which is uh, 10 molar hydrochloric acid, which we uh, picked up from Home Depot. This is 4 liters, but we'll only need 100 mil. Uh, yeah, 100 milliliters approximately for this, unless you could, of course, scale it up if you uh, want to make more of the uh, product. Um, anyhow, so here's the, um, what essentially is happening. You can see that we're going to um, be reacting the hydrochloric acid with the calcium carbonate, carbonate, and I have changed the colors up here so you can see it go as it goes over here. So our, um, we form calcium chloride, um, carbon dioxide, and water. And carbon dioxide will, is a gas, and we'll see it bubble out of solution. Now, um, you, you can see that uh, where the um, different uh, atoms of the uh, compounds end up after the equation. Um, and in purple, we have the calcium carbonate, which um, is here, here, and here. And there's the hydrochloric acid, which is there and there. Anyhow, so with that out of the way, we can now start by adding something to the hydrochloric acid, such as this eggshell, which is primarily calcium carbonate. Now, a vigorous amount of uh, bubbling will occur, and uh, your solution will heat up quite a bit. Um, and it is important to do this in a very tall um, container. I don't have a beaker that big, um, but this can produce a lot of fizzing um, ex um, and bubbling, especially with impure sources such as these uh, seashells. Um, and the impurities can cause lots of bubbling. Anyhow, so I'll go ahead and add in something like that seashell. Um, see a very vigorous amount of bubbling is occurring. So anyhow, I'll go ahead and start adding this and wait for everything to be dissolved so we have a nice solution of calcium chloride. Now it is of course important to wear gloves because this is concentrated acid and um, also be careful not to uh, breathe in the fumes that it is, as it is hydro hydrogen chloride gas which is very toxic um, and will form acid in your lungs. Um, which will very severely damage your lungs. So do not breathe that in. And as you can see, a huge amount of foaming is occurring. This is due to impurities, which are um, trapping carbon dioxide gas that's being generated and causes all this foaming. In a smaller container, this can bubble over, which needs to be avoided. If you're using pure calcium carbonate, however, this should much less be avoided. And by powderizing your contents, the bubbling will also be reduced. And yeah, we also want to add an excess of calcium carbonate because we want to react all the acid and I'll explain that later of why that's so important. Um, but for now, we'll just make sure that there's no more bubbling. And then we can scoop out whatever's left. Okay, so I moved back inside now, of course, because it's getting a bit dark out. And there's no real danger anymore. As most of our na acid is now um, in the form of calcium chloride because we've reacted almost all of it. Um, and so I just kept adding um, calcium carbonate until no more fizzing occurred. Um, or very little fizzing occurred, and this indicates that we've um, used up most of the hydrochloric acid. So um, you can see there's still a bit of a foamy layer, and there's some impurities, of course. We're going to have to filter it off. So here I just have a separate smaller canning jar, um, a glass funnel here, and uh, just a piece of coffee filter to uh, catch any of the impurities. Now, um, if you do look at this over here, you can see that the bubbling made it quite a fair ways up, almost to there. So um, you do want to be cautious of having this spill over, although the worst that's going to happen if it spills over is you're going to get uh, hydrochloric acid bubbles overflowing the sides. Nothing horrible is going to happen. It should just be avoided. Um, it'll also mess with your yield, and you're not going to get a perfect yield. Anyhow, so we can now go ahead and slowly start to filter this mixture off. And uh, when all the mixture has been filtered, then I'll meet you back and show you the next step. Okay, so now we must pre prepare a basic solution of sodium hydroxide. This will act um, to re uh, do a double displacement reaction with our calcium chloride, forming calcium hydroxide and sodium chloride. So, to start, we are going to need to make the solution. So I have 100 uh, milliliters of water here, and this, we are adding an excess of sodium hydroxide, because remember how I said before that we wanted to create a very saturated solution and get rid of as much acid as possible, which is why we add as much calcium carbonate until complete saturation? Well, the reason is, is that we have to, um, like, calcium hydroxide is actually quite soluble in acidic solutions, which you don't want. 
So we tried to destroy as much acid as possible, and we're now adding an excess of uh, sodium hydroxide to dissolve all the rest and make the solution basic. And calcium hydroxide is very insoluble in basic solutions, which is exactly what we need. So now, I, d I do not have a glass stir rod on hand, but with strong stirring, we can start to add 60 grams of sodium hydroxide to the water. This will get extremely hot, and uh, it's very exothermic. Now, it's okay if you use a steel spoon, because this, um, uh, sodium hydroxide is not corrosive towards steel, only aluminum, so do not use something that's aluminum. Anyhow, so I'll go ahead, finish mixing in the rest of this till we're left with a nice clear dissolved solution. Okay, so as everything is still dissolving, the solution has heated up ex exponentially. It's probably 70, 80, even 90 degrees Celsius. It's extremely hot to the touch and I, ca I can't keep my fingers on it. Anyhow, so we'll make sure everything's dissolved till we have a nice clear solution. And I didn't mention, but you can buy sodium hydroxide as lye crystals from places like Home Hardware, which is where I got this. And uh, you can also buy it some drain cleaners and whatnot, but um, just make sure it says sodium hydroxide or pure lye crystals or something of that matter. Anyhow, this is fairly cheap. It's like $16 for several pounds of it. Um, it's 6.6 .6 pounds, so you can buy it there. Anyhow, so when this is fully dissolved, I'll show you what happens when we add it to the um, calcium chloride solution. So here's the um, equation from before, and I've kept everything color-coded. And then we open it up, and you can see that we've continued the equation. So everything's still color-coded, so you can see where the calcium and chlorine um, had ended up in our calcium chloride, which will re we will react with some sodium hydroxide, which is in pink. You can see the um, hydroxide ion goes with the calcium, and um, then we have our chlorine with the sodium over here. So salt, which is sodium chloride, is very soluble and will be left in solution. However, calcium hydroxide in a basic solution is very insoluble and will, pre will precipitate out. We can then further wash our um, calcium hydroxide as it is not soluble in water to get rid of any remaining sodium chloride and other impurities to be left with a fairly pure um, calcium hydroxide product. So. It actually appears that this is actually quite clear now. It's still slightly cloudy, but it's clear enough. Remember to wear gloves. Is um, uh, Sodium hydroxide is extremely, extremely corrosive. So um, I'll just grab our other solution here. So here's our calcium chloride, which is slightly discolored from impurities. Now, upon addition, you're going to see a beautiful precipitant. It's very cool. This is our calcium hydroxide forming. You can see just like that. There's calcium hydroxide precipitating out of solution. It looks very, very cool as you can see. So now what we must do is fully mix everything together to get everything to react and fully precipitate out. And this is also an exothermic reaction. So I don't know if you can see, but there's a large amount of steam coming off. And this is very, very, very hot now. Anyhow, so it might not actually be so reactive if you were to simply just... Um, have a cool solution of sodium hydroxide, but because it was so hot, this greatly um, um, increased the reaction rate. Anyhow, so we'll go ahead, mix this round, and uh, make sure everything fully precipitates out. It's actually forming a very thick slurry now, and my camera lens is fogging up from all the steam. Okay, I'll meet you back as soon as everything's precipitated. Okay, so everything's been reacted, and I just topped it up with water, so that it's a bit more of a um, solution, um, more than, well not a solution, but a uh, suspension, more than a thick paste, which is what was formed before. Now we can let this settle out for an hour or so, or you could simply filter it. Um, but I'm going to go out in a moment anyhow, so we'll just let this settle down until we have a layer which we can then decant and place this probably into a larger container and add more water to further dilute our sodium chloride solution and repeat the process a few times um, to get a good amount of washing. Then we can add it to a filter and um, finally rinse it uh, before drying. And I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. But for now we'll just let this settle, settle out a bit. Okay, so I decanted off the uh, liquid once it settled and um, filled it back up with water, decanted, filled with water, decanted, filled with water and um, all the stuff left at the bottom was just placed off in a baking tray and we're gonna dry that in the oven in a moment. Um, but in the meantime we can take, um, like after I decanted, I uh, poured the top layer off and then some of the stuff that was mixed I just put into this filter which will uh, slowly filter through and catch any of the leftover uh, calcium hydroxide. And this solution here will slowly uh, settle out and we'll be able to uh, be left with a layer at the bottom which we can decant off the upper layer and um, salvage that also. So basically, now all we have to do is wait. So we'll collect as much calcium hydroxide as we can, 
place it in this baking pan, and in the meantime, we can actually get the uh, oven heating up to probably about 400-450 degrees Celsius because we really want to heat this up enough um, so that it will uh, definitely get rid of all the moisture. But um, upon too much heating, we will decompose it into um, calcium oxide, so don't heat it with a blowtorch or a Bunsen burner or something. Make sure you heat it um, in an oven. Alternatively, um, you could just dry it out in the open air over a period of time, but the longer we leave it exposed to the air, the more de um, it degrades because when in contact with carbon dioxide, it will form um, calcium carbonate um, and water. So we don't want to have it reacting with any carbon dioxide in the air or limit it to as minimal as possible. Although it doesn't have a super high affinity for um, carbon dioxide by any means, so it's not going to be sucking it out of the air rapidly by any means, but it'll still degrade. So um, anyhow, so I'll finish up with this, place it all in there, and put it in the oven, and we'll let it dry. Okay, so uh, it, here we have uh, 60, or uh, sorry, uh, 15 grams of quite pure and nice and white calcium hydroxide powder after uh, heating it up in the oven in a baking pan, which I dedicated strictly to science, um, and I ne no food ever goes in that, only chemicals, so uh, it's safe to put it in that. Um, anyhow, you can see that it's fairly nice, and our percent yield was uh, approximately 62%, um, which is what I calculated, which isn't amazing by any means, but uh, there was still a bit of waste, as you can see, there's uh, still a, f a fair bit in the containers which we used to filter, but I didn't really care a whole lot, because this process is cheap and probably didn't cost me much more than a dollar or two. Um, anyhow, uh, in a previous run I also made some pure calcium hydroxide, um, a while ago, and I've used up most of it, but I'll just combine the two bottles now. And, um, you can see that we're left with a nice, um, suspension of calcium hydroxide in that filter that we collected. Anyhow, that's basically how to make calcium hydroxide, and it's very useful. I'm primarily going to be, um, using this to, uh, make potassium hydroxide. I'm going to be taking potassium by tartrate, which is cream of tartar, and basically turning it into potassium hydroxide, um, using calcium hydroxide, which I will show in a future video. And uh, that should be interesting because pa potassium hydroxide is not easy to obtain. And um, I'm really uh, interested in doing this. Anyhow, if you wanted to purify this, because I'm sure it's not 100% pure, you could do a recrystallization using glycerol, as it is quite soluble in glycerol. However, with water, it's barely soluble in water. And as temperatures increase, its solubil solubility decreases. Anyhow, so it's basically how to make calcium hydroxide, and um, I have a couple different experiments planned for this, um, and I may even try to build, um, I'll be making um, potassium chlorate uh, from the ground up using chlorine gas and calcium hydroxide, which could be an interesting method, and it is how they do it in, uh, um, industrially, as I read on Wikipedia, and it could be cool to try to f uh, follow that paper. Anyhow, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you in future videos. Wait, bye.